Welcome to August segment of Emmy's The Blue Seat. And joining us today in front of the camera is Katrina Roll, President and CEO of United Way of the Big Ben. Um, just in case you're not aware, Katrina Roll is the President again and CEO of United Way, but also a former real estate attorney. She's a mom of four, three boys and a girl, <laughs> wife, daughter, sister, and many numerous titles associated with being Katrina Roll. So welcome, Katrina. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Um, I want to start off with uh, just a little bit more about your background for those of you who are not familiar with Katrina Roll. You've served on a number of charitable organization boards, um, including Children's Home Society of Florida, Community Foundation of North Florida, and the local chapter of Jack and Jill of America. You've also served on your alumni association board with your alma mater being the University of Florida where you received your law degree. Yeah. Okay, Tallahassee, no hating against UF uh, <laughs> at all. But the United Way's website states that their focus is being, um, I, I love this quote, so we are the problem solvers, the hand raisers, the game changers. We fight for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Yeah. So tell us more about the mission of the United Way. Well, just like what you share, we are here to really mobilize people, engage with folks to address our community's most vital concerns, and how do we do that collectively? Mm, fantastic. And the United Way of the Big Ben has been around for how long? Wow. We are going on 77 years now. 77 years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a nice long time of great impact in our community. Yeah. Well, I'm going to throw back to uh, 2015, oh. the article in the Tallahassee Democrat that announced uh, your hiring as the CEO and president of United Way. And they, the headline was United Way names first African-American president. And that was the headline. Um, but you stated in that article that race won't play a factor when you start the job on March the 9th of 2015. So if we fast forward four and a half years now, would you make that same statement about race playing a role in leading United Way in our community? I would. I mean, I feel like it's been a matter of my work ethic, my ability, uh, how I engage with and interact with people. Um, I think it's more than somebody doing it because I'm an African-American, it's me doing it because what I bring to the table. Oh, fantastic. Have you ran into any circumstances that made you maybe question that belief? No, I mean, I, I can't, I mean, I have to stop and think. I can't say that I've, I've run into that at all. I've met with countless donors, uh, corporate CEOs, just people in general that I've met across the spectrum in eight counties that we serve and I have not experienced that now at least not personally I don't know what's happening when I'm not there but not personally I have not had any problems sure yeah and it's hard to know what could be happening behind right. your back or behind right. the scenes right. you really never know that unless someone is that bold to right. confront you about it but I do think that was a very profound statement to put um, in that article in 2015, and of course, looking at the state of where we are right now, um, <laughs> which brings me to the Alice Report. So can you explain the purpose of the Alice Report and when was it first released? So it sort of predates to me, but Alice stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employee. And I always add yet employee because you're, you know, but it's also the, those, the working poor and those below that threshold, the people living in poverty as well. So the United Ways of Florida, because they are, you know, we're in 67 counties in the state of, in all 67 counties, uh, commissioned Rutgers University to, to do that report. And there are United Ways across the country that have also done that, not all, but many. And we wanted to take a look at who's, who, what, what does poverty look like in our state? And what does the working poor look like? And what do we do with this data? And so the first report came out maybe a month or two before I started in this role. And quite honestly, when we first got it, we were saying, wow, we got this data. What are we going to do with it? How do we incorporate this into our work? And that's sort of the, the process that we were following from then on. Wow. And so how have the results impacted the direction of United Way? So now we're on our third iteration of that report. And when we got to the second and the numbers kept increasing, we knew that we had to do something. And quite frankly, when you look at a lot of what we do, we're already working uh, supporting programs and initiatives that benefit people in poverty uh, and the working poor. But how do we let that data, how do we let that report inform our work more intently, mm -hmm. you know, with more intentionality? 
And we were very fortunate to, can you tell me if I'm kind of go, okay, we were very fortunate to be selected as one of three pilot programs for the global uh, network for North Highland. And what that meant for United with the Big Bend is that we had six consultants working with us to help us through the strategic planning process that we went through and to help us figure out how we can incorporate that report more, um, with more, with more intention in our work yes. and how do we help it inform our work. Are there any data, is there any data that has been, you know, revealed from the report that's kind of been shocking to you, having been a resident of Tallahassee community for a long time? I mean, is there anything that's been just really eye-opening? I think what's most shocking is that the numbers keep increasing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, as a community, there are a lot of very giving people in this community. We have some, uh, the nonprofits are doing some tremendous work in this community, but how do we grapple with this data and collectively make a difference? Mm. Well, fantastic. And so how hard was it for your board to make the decision to narrow the focus on poverty? It was almost a 20 month process. You know, wow. so we started with uh, some surveys that we put out. We sent out to all of our stakeholders. We asked the agencies uh, who were getting funding from United Way to send it out to their clients. It was put out in the link in the Tallahassee Democrat. Then we hired a, a company out of St. Pete to take that information and, and summarize it. And then they facilitated a community conversation. And we took that information to actually start the strategic planning process. So there were a lot of steps along the way. And when we were probably in the early stages of all of that is when North Holland came into play and that they're experts at that. So we were incredibly blessed to have these experts to take all of that that we've done that far and to help us keep forward. So there was a lot of work. I, I, my board was extremely engaged in this process because there were countless committee meetings and subcommittee meetings. And it culminated in July of 2000, what year is this, 19, 2018, <laughs> <laughs> 2018 with them uh, voting for a new uh, strategic direction, which is what we have. The overarching theme is economic empowerment through workforce enablement. Nice. And, and then the funding through those five outcome areas, uh, housing, early education, safety net, the aging workforce and the retirees and skills development. Mm covers a lot of ground. It does cover a lot of ground and you you know we can't cover everything in the report but sure. because the overarching thing was economic empowerment those are the five outcome areas that the board decided for the next couple of years to focus on to see if we can't start working with the uh, funded programs to make a difference in this space. Well with all that being said what would you say is the the vision of United Way of Big Ben moving forward? I think we are really going to be continuing to look at research, look at ways to partner, uh, not just with folks whose programs or agencies whose programs are being funded, but other people who are working in this space. How do we really convene as a community to start tackling these problems in our community? Because we really, this is a great place to live and there's a lot of positive things going on, or there are a lot of positive things going on. Mm -hmm. As I've shared, there are nonprofits doing some tremendous work, but you know, that North Star, how do we all get to that North Star together? Right. It's all about collaboration. Absolutely. Well, Katrina, thank you so much for providing time and taking a seat in the blue seat oh, and sharing with some information. And I, blue and I didn't I forgot about it, right? Exactly. You match perfectly, oh. color coordinated. Couldn't ask for anything more. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure.